Hi, my name is Andrea Sachuk. Today I would like to briefly cover analytics implementation strategy. I'm doing an audit of Adobe Analytics implementation on the Spark as a websites and I have uncovered one thing that I wanted to share with you in this video. Before I dig into how Adobe Analytics is implemented on this website, I would like to say that probably the very first step the company may want to do is to answer the question why they want the analytics implemented on their digital properties. Usually the answer is that the company wants to make informed decisions, meaning that they want to know what to do, why to do, where to do, and what type of result or impact this will have on their business, on their business KPIs or key KPIs. And this is important because based on the answer, uh, they will be able to plan what needs to be done with the analytic solution, what data they need to track, from which data sources, from which data, uh, from which uh, digital properties, etc. And why I'm starting with that? Because when I looked at how the analytics is implemented on Spark Casa, I realized that the analytics code exists only on two domains, on sparkasa.de and on one of the subdomains, which is immobilian sparkasa.de. At the same time, uh, when I clicked on the online banking, and online banking seems to be one of the key focuses for all banks because today all customers are trying to use something online on the way and i expected that the tracking code must be there as well and when we click through online banking i am redirected to one of the other sites or the mains of sparkasse and the tracking code is not implemented here and I tried to understand which other websites they have. And it appeared that the company actually manages huge amount of different domains. And I will show you a few of them. If we go to offices, we'll be able to find all offices. They have physical offices. And for example, let's see what offices they have for the letter D and you see how many of them are listed here and this is only for one letter and if we click on one of them we will see detailed information including the physical address working hours and also a link referring to a dedicated website So you can see that I was redirected to a dedicated website and this is a part of the Sparkas uh, company or digital properties of that company. And if I go back to the major domain and we'll select, uh, for example, another office. I will also be able to find the link referring to a dedicated website. And again, on this website, the Adobe Analytics code is not implemented. And then I thought, how many websites they actually have? And I tried to use Google to find out the answer. And you can see I was looking for the websites that contain Spark Asset and internet filiale, which is uh, offices, in the page title and uh, the site should be hosted under the D domain. And you can see that I'm now on the 19th page, which is already means that there are about 190 domains. I presume uh, the company actually manages many more. So you can now understand uh, the size of uh, the amount of digital properties that Sparkasse uh, manage. And 
What this means, if you live somewhere near this office, you likely is served in that office. And if so, you as a customer will likely add a link to this, uh, let's say, local site in your bookmarks. And going forward, you will be visiting that local site when you need to get some information about special offers, probably some other type of information or if you want to do something. And again, if you need to go to your online banking, you also will be using a dedicated link. Or for example, here you can just um, enter your online banking. And this means that none of the data will be gathered for further analysis. And my hypothesis here is that because of that, the company may not know almost anything about their existing customer database uh, when it comes to their online behavior, what they are doing on their websites. At the same time, uh, the website which is hosted on sparkasa.d domain probably uh, usually visited by the prospects or by those who are not simply not their customers. And if so, it may appear that the data set that is being collected in Adobe Analytics is almost uh, used for their prospect analysis. And there is not enough data to understand what their customers are doing. There is no data about what sites they visit. There is no data about the traffic split among all these locally major sites. And now you can think that if so, if for example 90 or 80 percent of all your customer data database is visiting the websites where you do not have analytics solution, you may be missing potential insights or you may miss in your opportunity to know what your customers are doing, where are your weak points, what things have to be improved, how to improve customer experience and what should be actually improved on the website to reach your business goals. And at the same time, the company may mistakenly think that the data set that is collected in Adobe Analytics through the sparkasa.d and uh, Immobilian uh, subdomain is all the data that they have. And if so, the company may make probably wrong decisions based on the data set that represents only or almost only their prospective customers. Why I'm saying this, why I'm recording this video? Before you start implementing your Adobe Analytics or just other analytics solutions, make sure that you understand what type of data will be helpful for you to reach your business goals, to solve your current problems. And when you have a list of goals, you for sure will not miss this type of uh, digital properties where the analytics should be implemented. I'm not saying that the current implementation is done in the wrong way because I don't know the business requirements for the implementation. I don't know how the company is using the data in Adobe Analytics. But I wanted to show you, to demonstrate to you, based on my vision of how analytics could be used, that if you do not implement the code on your key digital properties, you may be missing the correct set of data for your decisions, for your analysis, for reaching your business goals. From time to time, I hear from my clients that they do not have enough value from the investments in this or that analytic solution. And this is exactly one of the causes. It's not enough to implement the solution. It's very important to understand what type of data you need, what type of understanding you require to make informed decisions. And this is the very first and required step. And this is a part of your strategy. That's why always think twice, think carefully, 
what you want to achieve by implementing this or that solution, this or that method. Otherwise, you won't have enough data or that data that you will be having may not allow you to leverage the data the way you expected. This is what I wanted to share with you in this video. If it was helpful, please hit the like button, share your comments underneath. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's time to subscribe to it. And hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss new video uploads. Thank you for watching.